I'm going to show you the exact steps I took to make $74,000 on Shopify in one month. Alright, so now I'm a lot smaller and uh, before I actually get into the steps that I took, I want to show you guys my analytics because I know some of you might not believe me uh, and also a lot of people actually just Photoshop shit and they don't actually make a lot of money they just go in Photoshop and Photoshop all those screenshots so here are my analytics I'll refresh the page just so you know it's legit and I haven't inspected any elements or anything and my internet blows so we're waiting a little bit refreshing and I'll have all my stuff blurred out in terms of like my store name because I don't want you guys figuring out that shit I was still on my products and so uh, here are the analytics I'll scroll down a little bit um, I don't want to show you guys the actual products I've been selling but as you can see just over seventy four thousand dollars two dollars and eighty four cents over the 74k mark uh, goal was 100k but didn't get there got pretty close though so we'll see if I can get there this month and uh, average order value almost 50 bucks 1500 orders I uh, didn't really do any email marketing at all, so um, returning customer rate is only about a uh, percent, and so um, my average conversion rate, is, this is incorrect, that's from my online store, we'll do a uh, calculation here, uh, and doing uh, total orders over sessions, or actually we'll do visitors rather. So average conversion rate for the month was 3.24. So uh, kind of decent, I guess, um, for uh, average order value of 50 bucks. That's pretty good. And so uh, I'd say these numbers are pretty solid. So I'll show you guys how I did this in uh, all the steps I took right now. All right, so the first thing you gotta do is you gotta find your winning product. All you need is one winning product you don't need to sell multiple different products well I mean you can but you don't want to be marketing different products you don't need to uh, you just need to find one really good product that you can sell to the masses and just scale the shit out of it so just gotta find that one winner and that's all you need it's a lot easier said than done but the way you're gonna do that is you wanna first find successful stores and so you want to make up a list of a bunch of stores that are uh, drop shipping and basically uh, just kind of track how many visitors they have. You want to find stores with uh, around 100,000 or above uh, visitors per month. That's what I mean by successful stores. If they're getting that much traffic, it means they're spending a shitload of money on ads, in which means they're, uh, I would hope they're profiting. And so uh, they're definitely selling a lot of products either way. So uh, they know how to find products and you want to go ahead and spy on them. That's the second thing I said uh, here is you want to kind of spy and see what they do. And so a, a good way to do this is through the uh, Commerce Inspector Chrome extension. So just add this and so you can check out all the different products that add to the store. This uh, extension also helps you to see how many visitors they have, so it kind of does that as well. And so you just uh, check out what products they're adding to their store. And so uh, the second thing, or sorry, the third thing I have here is uh, you want to test products that they add to their store and that fit uh, the winning product criteria. Now, I'm not going to go through that in this video because it's a bit longer. But let me know if you guys want to see that. Um, just leave me a comment or a like or something like that. and. Uh, I can definitely make a video about that, but uh, you want to find products. Not you don't want to test all the products that they're adding because they're adding a, a shitload of products because they're continuously testing and and they're doing their research and they're testing products. So you want to test products that are added by them, but are uh, a winner in your book, and so they kind of fit certain uh, criteria. And so um, once you figure that out. You want to test those out and so uh, for testing on Facebook we're, we're just doing straight testing uh, sorry we're just doing straight Facebook no Instagram none of that big money is where Facebook is because that made a lot of sense Facebook is where the big money is at so you want to spend a lot of money on Facebook so just I would ignore Instagram for the most part the way you're gonna be testing is you want to do 20 bucks a day per ad set, 
you always want to start off with purchase and you want to do at least three different audiences. So you would do three different ad sets all optimized for purchase and all for 20 bucks a day. If uh, you can't spend that much, just do like 15 bucks a day or 10 bucks a day. I wouldn't even do five. That's probably not enough, um, especially for higher priced products. But uh, you definitely want to start off with purchase because that's what you care about. You don't give a shit about engagement. You don't give a shit about view contents. All you want is you want purchases. Just go straight for the purchases because if you're spending money and uh, you're optimized for view contents, you're getting a shitload of view contents, but you're not getting purchases. It doesn't matter. And so you really, you just want purchases. So that's where you're going to start off with. Just saves a lot of time and a wasting of your life trying to test out different um, optimizations. So just don't even do that. Do straight purchase off the start. All right, so once you're getting a bunch of sales on this product and you're profitable, it's time to scale slash improve. And so first thing you gotta do is you need to try out different ad creatives. So you start off with your initial ad creative and so you wanna try and make that better. So say um, just making a different video or adding um, more subtitles or something like that or uh, changing up the ad copy to get people to click more. So uh, you really want to try and increase that click-through rate and lower the CPM. And so uh, that's kind of the goal there is to get more people to your website for cheaper. And so that way you'll uh, lower your costs in the end and uh, you'll make more money that way. Uh, also on your uh, site and you want to try and increase the price of your product. So don't do this right away. One, maybe once you get like 30 or 40 sales or something like that, um, you could definitely try increasing the price. What I do is uh, I normally try and price my products three times the, the cost. And so when I'm testing it, I will actually drop it down from that uh, three times cost. So like say um, the pro uh, cost of my product is $10. Uh, I'm going, I plan on selling it for 30, but when I'm testing it out, I'm going to sell it for 25. And so if I test it out and I'm getting a bunch of sales and I'm making money, um, I'm going to continue to do that. And then uh, once I get like 30, 40 purchases, that's when I normally do it. Um, I like to increase uh, another five bucks. And normally there isn't a big difference. If you do see a drop, um, you just want to go through your calculations and see if you're actually making more profit or you're uh, making less profit. Most likely you'll, you'll, you'll make more profit and actually you can, kind of just like keep trying to increase the price until uh, you start losing money. And so um, that way you're going to end up making as much money as you possibly can, increasing the price of where it's, uh, it cuts off your profits. All right. So once people are buying your product and you are making sales, you want to try and increase that average order value so you can make the most money per sale. The way you're going to do this is through upsells and cross sells. These can be pre-purchase or post-purchase through one-click upsells. Another thing you can do is you can add a shipping cost. So that way um, people are paying like five bucks for shipping. And so that's just straight profit right there. You're not selling any more stuff. You're just pocketing that $5. So, and a lot of people, they don't even care. Um, you won't see that big of a drop off between uh, abandoned cards. So, I mean, you could try it. You can try different shipping points, uh, shipping costs, but uh, I normally do five bucks and so it don't see a big drop off there. All right. So back to the Facebook end of things, if you want to start scaling horizontally through uh, new interests. And so, uh, just continuously launch new ad sets, keep everything else the same from, uh, when you're testing and just all, all those parameters, keep them the same, just change the interest and continuously, uh, try and find new interests and, uh, just keep launching ad sets. This will help you uh, build up your pixel data and get Facebook to really know who the purchases are and you'll get all those view contents, all those ad cards, all the purchases and uh, eventually will launch into lookalike audiences. The next thing you want to do when you have found your winning product is you want to start retargeting. So this is just basically launching ads to people that have 
visited your store or added the cart or even like just watched some of the video and haven't purchased, this is gonna be your most profitable ad set by far and it's easy money. People are really warm, they're not cold traffic, they're warm traffic, so they've already seen your stuff, they know what it is, and it's really easy to sell to them. Just offer like a coupon or something, and they'll buy it most likely. And so you definitely gotta do this, it's free money, it's very nice. Another thing that I do is uh, to some of the best ad sets or some of the best interests, I also launch uh, a couple of PPE ad sets to them. And so uh, this is really good because the, the CPMs are super low. So it'll get a lot of traffic to your store and uh, these can actually be really profitable. And also it's really good for the actual um, Facebook post too because it's going to build up that engagement. So you're going to get a shitload of likes and comments and also a lot of views, so this definitely helps. And when people see that, uh, it says social proof that really helps sales, so you definitely wanna do this. And so like I was saying before, you wanna keep launching ad sets into other interests, and you also wanna launch ad sets into lookalike audiences. So you wanna create lookalike audiences for each step of the funnel, so people that have um, watched 95% of your video, they've viewed content, add to cart, initiate checkout and purchase so all those you want to create lookalike audiences for and you can do uh, one through five percent and so you can make uh, five audiences for each one of those steps of the funnel and, and so there's a shitload of audiences right there you can launch into and try those out and so that's just more audiences to scale horizontally into so after you've done that and you found some good interest you can also uh, scale into other uh, countries. So you wanna start off with the United States, validate the audience, validate the product there. And so once you're making money there, you can uh, launch into other countries. The main countries that I use are uh, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand. I don't really uh, mess with any of the other countries. It's just really a hassle. Um, these countries are normally the most profitable for me and easiest to deal with terms of shipping and also um, to like chargebacks and fraud and that kind of stuff. So uh, you can definitely try those out. And also, once you've built up enough pixel data in these countries, you can launch, uh, you can create lookalike audiences for each one of these countries too. So that's even more ad sets, or sorry, more audiences you can launch ad sets into. So even more uh, scaling horizontally there. This is a, uh, a big thing that I do is just scale horizontally. Um, the next thing I have is uh, you can, of course, scale vertically. This is a bit more challenging um, just because sometimes it's not going to work. Sometimes uh, just Facebook can't spend your money and um, actually get you purchases. And so um, you can definitely try to uh, duplicate your ad sets, duplicate the best ones and uh, increase the budget. I don't normally mess with any ad set that's working i don't like change the budget at all uh, normally i find that kind of messes with it so uh, if it's working i just leave it if i want to uh, scale duplicate increase the budget and so that way um, you can spend more in that same audience and so hopefully you can make more money that way all right so those were all ways to increase your revenue but while you're increasing your revenue probably going to be spending more on Facebook or well, you will be spending more on Facebook in return the ad spend is going to go down it's inevitable when you spend more uh, your return on ad spend is going to go down and so you want to try and cut costs wherever you can so a few ways to do that is through uh, AliExpress cash back so though uh, there are programs out there where uh, basically affiliate programs where you just buy stuff on AliExpress and uh, you get some cash back for it so um, this is a good way to lower your product costs and just it's just really it's just free money So whenever you fulfill uh, one of your orders uh, you get some money back from uh, whatever you paid for the product. So this is a good way to uh, Basically just get free money All right, so another way to decrease costs is through uh, seeing if you can get a better price with your supplier. So some suppliers won't want to decrease their price at all, but uh, you can definitely find some where you can negotiate with them, say that you're running big businesses and you're gonna be buying a bunch of these. It also helps if you have a lot of orders already, you can negotiate for a better price, but uh, this will help you reduce your 
uh, product costs as well. And so uh, this is a good way to reduce costs. Another way to uh, sort of get some money back is through credit card, uh, cash back credit card. So there's uh, different reward systems out there. Uh, I know there are um, a few credit cards where you can get a 2% cash back. And so it's literally 2% more profit you're making. So you use this for like uh, your ad spend and your, uh, your product costs. And so uh, you put it all on that credit card and uh, you get a bunch of cash back and it's just free money. You don't have to do anything else. Uh, there's no extra work and uh, it's, it's another 2% right there. And when you guys are doing big numbers, like 2% doesn't seem like a lot, but it, it is significant when you're doing big numbers and it it's a lot of money. So you wanna try and reduce your costs as much as possible and just lower that percentage of uh, cost any way you can, even the slightest bit matters. So definitely try and do that. All right, so another way to reduce costs is through getting a better Shopify plan that has lower payment processing fees. And so payment processing fees are pretty annoying just because uh, there's nothing you can really do about them because you, you have to pay fees in order for these payment processors to process your payments. And so uh, you can kind of reduce it a little bit by getting a better Shopify plan uh, but there really isn't too much to do in that area, but that's another way to reduce your cost. And so that pretty much wraps up the video, guys. You want to find your winning product, scale that winning product by increasing revenue and reducing costs, and it's that simple. I know I didn't go too in-depth on any of those steps in this video, but I have other videos on my channel, and I will in the future if I don't have them on right now. If you guys want to see me specifically go in depth on any of these parts and, or you're confused, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And I will certainly make a video about it or just reply to you if uh, that is sufficient. So if you guys found this helpful, really appreciate it if you hit that like button. And if you guys are new, hit that subscribe button. I'll be uploading daily Shopify content. And so I will see you in the next one. Later.